Hello, welcome again. Another short video. This time we're going to look at series circuits, uh, volt drop, how to calculate the volt drop, how to calculate the total current, total resistance, and basically analyze a circuit. So this is our circuit. So our supply is coming from here. This is our live part, if you like. And then it's got this squiggly line. And that squiggly line represents um, a resistance of some sort. Could be anything. In this case, I've said it's the live cable. Could be anything. Then it goes to another squiggly line, which in this case I've labeled the water heater element. But again, it, it could represent any resistance at all. And then as we come along, I've got a third little squiggly line. This is, this is the symbol for a resistor, by the way. Um, they're not called squiggly lines. And this one, uh, in this case, is representing our neutral cable. So, in the world of electricians, this live cable is, I'm going to do it in brown, is our R1. And this neutral cable would be our RN. And we quite often, especially in design, use R1 and RN um, to calculate th things like short circuit currents and make sure that our cable can withstand the kind of fault currents that um, we're going to expect. So where do we start? Well, the first thing we'd want to know in this circuit is how much current is going to flow when we connect this circuit up to a source of 230 volts. Depending on the voltage, depending on the resistance, that current flow is going to change. And it's going to change because of Ohm's law. Um, let's just remind you what Ohm's law is. So our voltage is equal to our current times the resistance in the circuit. Um, or current is equal to our voltage divided by our resistance. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is work out what our total resistance is. We've got our total volts, so I'm going to call that VT, V total. That's 230 volts. Got that. Tick. The current, we don't know yet. But we can work it out if we can work out the resistance. So in a circuit like this, a series circuit, the resistance is found, and I'm going to call that RT, resistance total. That's found by essentially just adding up all the resistances. It is as logical as it looks in a series circuit. So our R1 plus our R2 plus our R three in this case. This being the second resistance, that being the third and the first. And you know, if we had more than that, we'd, we'd just keep adding them. So you know, could have R4, 5, 6, 7, etc. So to calculate our resistance total on our circuit, we've got this resistor, which is 2 ohms. plus this resistor, which is the water heater element in our situation, which is 18 ohms. And then finally, we've got our neutral cable, or R3, um, two ohms. And we just, we just add them up. How easy is that? So 2 plus 18 is 20 plus 2. So we've got a total resistance in our circuit of 22 ohms. So now we can put that in. Our total, 22 ohms. Nearly there. So let's calculate for the current now because we've got the total voltage and we've got the total resistance so we should be able to work out the total current 
So the sum, looking at it there, we'll call it IT, total current. It's going to be the total volts divided by the total resistance, which in our case is 230 volts divided by 22 ohms. Now people who are quick at maths can probably work that out. Not me. See, I skipped a bit of school and I went straight into uni to learn maths. And so um, the basics I do actually struggle with, uh, but I can do third order linear differential equations, no problem. Um, so 230 volts divided by 22 ohms gives us a current flow. Can you see that? 10.45 amps. So 10.45 amps. Excellent. So let's just write down them parameters somewhere a little bit out of the way. So our V total 230 volts. Our total was 22 ohms. And our current total was 10.45 amps. Okay, so far so good. Let's uh, tidy that up. And get rid of all the unnecessary. It's a series circuit, remember that. Let's clear up that and that. Okay. So now we're back to the circuit diagram. Now, sometimes we're going to need to know the volt drop across um, a resistor for many reasons, really. Um, and also, we check volt drop uh, quite a lot in our circuits. It's one of the essential parts of the design sequence uh, because we want to make sure that our cables don't provide so much resistance to the current flow that by the time it gets to the thing we're trying to power, we don't actually have enough supply voltage to power it properly. That's quite a problem um, with inductive loads um, because they'll pull more current to make up the loss of power, um, which can overheat our cables, our switch gear, and can be quite dangerous. With a resistive load like this, if our first cables um, had so much resistance that it wasn't getting enough energy, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It just wouldn't get as hot as we'd expect. So resistive loads, a little bit safer with the volt drop, um, but inductive loads is something to consider. Anyway, that's, that's second year stuff. So for now, let's say we want to work out the volt drop across this resistor here. Let's call it volt drop one. And we'll do all of them. Volt drop two. And then volt drop three. So the equation to calculate volt drop across a resistor is actually still Ohm's law. But you just need to pick the right current, the right resistance, and the right voltage. So the equation is simply the current. And in this case, because it's a series circuit, this current, the IT, it's got nowhere else to go. So it's going to be the same everywhere. So we call it IT, so the total current, times by the thing we're trying to um, look at. So in this case, we want to know the volt drop over this resistor. And so in this case, it will be our 2 ohm resistor. And that will give us a volt drop across this point here. So our equation would be 10.45 amps times the 2 ohms will give us the volt drop across that there. And again, I'm going to go to my calculator because I'm that bad. So 20.90, I could have done that. 20.90 <laughs> volts. So we've lost 20.90 volts across that resistor. And again, we can do the same thing for the second resistor and we can work out the volt drop there. It'd be volt drop two. 
is equal to the same current because it's still the same current. So our 10.45 amps times by this resistor because we're interested in the volt drop across that one now. So 18 ohms. And yeah, I will need to calculate for that one. Um, <clears throat> 10.45 times 18, 188, wow. 188.1 volts lost. So that's quite, that's quite substantial really, isn't it? So let's do uh, the final one. So we're writing them down here. 20.90 volts, 188.1 volts, number two, and volt drop three. Well, it's the same resistance, and we got the same current, so it's going to be the same as the first one. So 20.90 volts. Not so bad when you break it down. The confusion will be using which resistance and which current and which voltage, and that just takes a bit of practice, really. I suggest you kind of watch over a few examples like this um, till you just work out the pattern. Now, there was a man called Mr. Kirchhoff, and he said that the volt drops in the circuit will add up to the supply voltage. And this is a handy little check that we can do when we're doing these kind of analysis, just to make sure we haven't made an error somewhere. So if we sum these up and it comes to around that, then we've done something right. <laughs> if it doesn't, we probably want to check our calculations again. So we've got 20.9 plus 188.1 plus 20.9. And wouldn't you know it, it comes to can you see that? 229.9 volts. Now, where's the other point, uh, one, oh 001 gone? Uh, well, you know, rounding errors probably. In the real world, it never, ever, ever comes to the supply voltage. And that's because there's just losses everywhere. There's losses in the cables. There's losses in the terminals. So getting it back to that supply voltage is theoretically um, possible, but in practice not possible but it's going to be very close um, always very close and essentially that is how we would anal analyze 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 a series circuit so i'm just gonna write the equations on the board to calculate um, well everything really so vt would be uh, your volt drop one plus volt drop two plus volt drop three. Your RT, we worked that out by adding up our resistors. So we had resistor one plus resistor two plus resistor three, um, which in the real world, let's just link it back to real world. This one was our live cable and, and actually it is called R1 in the real world. This one was just the heat, the water heater element so, you know, it, we're calling it R2 to put it into an equation so we know what, which one we're talking about. But in the real world, it would be called the water heater element. It hasn't got a letter assigned to it like the live, the neutral and the CPC. Uh, and this one was our neutral one um, and we called that RN. Incidentally, if we were going to consider the CPC as well, we call that R2 in the real world. So it's important that you don't get um, those kind of things confused. And the reason why they're R1, R2 and Rn is because we're talking about resistances and you know, those R stands for resistance. Okay, so that's how we'd calculate our total resistance. And then to get our total current, what we did, we did our total voltage divided by our total resistance. And then we went on to do the volt drops, and we said volt drop one was equal to the current in the circuit, which is the total current, so IT, times resistor one. 
because that's the uh, resistor we were interested in. So we kind of zoomed in. It's still Ohm's law, but we've now zoomed into this area. Volt drop to total current times resistor to, again, because we've zoomed into that area. So we're interested in the voltage across it, that resistance, and the current going through it. Then voltage, uh, volt drop three was the same pattern. So total cur the current going through it times by the resistor that we're interested in. In that case, it was the two ohm one there. So I'm gonna leave you with that for a few seconds, soak it all in. Um, and by all means, you can make these uh, up and give yourself a supply voltage. And the good thing about Ohm's law is that it will all work out. You just have a high current or a low current. You know, the current's kind of dictated by the voltage and the resistance. So you can make up your own circuits and your own supply voltage, and then just check it with Kirchhoff's law to make sure you've done all your sums right. But you can practice this to your heart's content, um, and you definitely should. So in the real world, this could represent an actual circuit. We could be adding up um, the resistance of our live cable, the resistance of our neutral cable, and then calculating the volt drop uh, based on the design current. Um, exactly like this, really. Um, or we could be talking about maybe the R1 and R2 measurements. Um, you know, when you get into it, you'll find this equation pop up quite a lot. And essentially, it's, it's series resistance. It's just addition. Um, so it's a good skill to have this. Next video, we'll be looking at parallel resistance and just looking at the differences with them. Um, there is a subtle difference, main one being that now the current is different depending on which branch it goes down. Uh, but the voltage at the beginning of each resistor will always be the same. So we're not calculating volt drops there, we're calculating currents um, because they're going to split and do different things. So, do the like and subscribe thing. That's, that's a good thing for me, apparently. I'm, I'm still learning why, but uh, please do. Um, soak it all up. I'll leave that for a few seconds, and I'll say goodbye. Goodbye.